At Georgia Pacific, safety is very important to us, and as engineers, we have to make sure that we have the right tools to do our job safe. We've got a lot of different tanks here in the mill. Some of them have pulp in them, some of them have water in them, chemicals, um, or even air that we have inside of our tanks. We got some small tanks, and we have some big ones, like this one. This tank behind me right here is 70 feet tall and 55 feet in diameter. Sometimes we have to go inside the tanks to do maintenance and inspections. But before we do that, we have to make sure that all the harmful gases are out of, out of the tanks and that we have fresh, clean air inside of them. To do that, we take a fan like this and place it outside of the tank and insert a hose inside the tank to be able to exchange that air and make sure it's fresh. Now the question is, how do we know we have all the bad air out and the good air in the tank? To be able to do this, we need to calculate the space of the tank, or the volume. Can you calculate the cubic feet of the tank and convert that to gallons? In order to calculate the volume of the cylinder, we need to take our diameter of 55 feet and our height of 70 feet and use that with the volume of the cylinder equation. So if you think of it as a circle, at the bottom and then extending up a certain amount of height, we can use the area of a circle, pi r squared, and multiply that by the height. So that will give us an equation of height times pi r squared. The answer that will give you is 166,308 cubic feet. So now that we know the cubic footage of the tank, we can convert that to gallons by using the conversion factor of gallons per cubic foot. That will give us 1,244,070 gallons. Wow, John, that's a lot of space. Sure is. To put that in perspective, you could fill up your car's gas tank 83,000 times, or you could cover Lambeau Field in three feet of pulp. Now our next step is we need to determine how long it's going to take to get good clean air inside that tank. If we use a fan like this, this gives us 628 cubic feet per minute. So knowing these variables, how long will it take for this fan to replace all the air inside the tank? Uh, to do the calculation, we'll have to take our volume that we calculated before and divide it by the flow rate of the fan, and we'll get 265 minutes. So now if someone's going to make uh, a repair or do an inspection inside the tank, per regulations, we'll need to have six air exchanges per hour. That means that the fan will have to fill the tank up six times in an hour. How many fans will we need? To be able to do this calculation, we'll have to figure out how many exchanges we can do in an hour with the fan. So we'll take the fan flow rate and multiply that by 60 minutes to get the flow rate per hour. And that comes out to 37,680 cubic feet an hour. Then from there, we'll have to take our volume of the tank, 166,308, and multiply it by six for the number of air exchanges we need per hour. Then we'll divide that by our flow rate per hour of the fan, which was 37,680. So after you multiply the volume of the tank and divide that by the flow rate of the fan per hour, you'll get a total of 27 fans. That's a lot of fans. You know, Iman, I don't think we can fit that many fans and hoses by this tank. So we're limited to only about five fans. So if we use five fans, how much air does each fan need to move in cubic feet per minute to accomplish the six air exchanges per hour? In order to determine the fan size, we need to take the volume of the tank and multiply it by six, the number of air exchanges, and divide it by the number of fans, five. Once we have that number, we divide it by 60 minutes to convert it from cubic feet per hour to cubic feet per minute. That will give us an answer of 3,327 cubic feet per minute. All right, John, I think it's time to go back to work, but we'll leave you with one more question. All of our tanks are different sizes and shapes. So we'll leave you with a tank that's a different size and shape, and we want you to find out the volume. 